flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. If you're still enjoying the series, drop a like on the video, that'd be spectacular. Today, we're starting on the page of Reese Stewart, one of the regions we brought in last season. You'll see that at the moment he's on loan at Eastleigh. Um, I don't normally want to do this, but I actually felt there would be an opportunity for him because they said they'd actually be a reasonable player. And you can see he started six games for them and came off the bench once. Not had the best impact so far for the lad, but he is still very young and has a lot to learn. But they promised to give him a lot of football, and that's the main reason I let him go, because I think he's actually got reasonable attributes to make me think that he could do something now he's got solid determination he's not as quick as some of the other guys we've got in that position but he's not a slouch either and the thing is he's got eight crossing ten dribbling good finishing as well composure's a little on the low side but he's got great work rate and very aggressive great technique his passing isn't amazing but i think again there's a lot to like about this guy and he's another one that could be in contention for that role potentially two stars currently his contract's up uh, next summer actually but i will probably be extending that uh, we'll see how he does on loan at Eastley, and then we'll take a little look at it. I think he's one of the guys we got on a free transfer anyway, but it's just interesting to see. The fact is, he has progressed quite nicely, or so far, it certainly seems on loan that he's progressed quite nicely while out on loan at Eastley. So hopefully with a full season, he can grab himself a couple of goals, get a few assists for them, since he seems to be playing week in, week out, and that can only be a good thing. Tim Sherwood, a man who once said he was only interested in the Spurs job if everything was right for him, sacked by Carlisle after cucking up the League 2 promotion campaign. Yeah, couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. Take your gilet and shove it up your ass. That flip upside down had me spinning my phone endlessly to try and flip the screen back over. I didn't realise that that would be a thing when I did that, but I'm kind of glad it is now. I didn't like the theme song at first, but it's really grown on me. Love it now. You see, it gets you at the end. Hold your gun, Capybara. That comment in the last video makes me so mad. I know, it's stuck in your head now, isn't it? Put it on a shirt too. I am genuinely tempted now for the first shirt I actually ever get made to get like a stylized capybara holding like a pistol with some other like random quotes around the outside and stuff. That would be quite cool. Like all like, um, I don't know. Hard to explain like vector art. It'd be kind of cool. Hold your fire, capybara. The most cursed comment I have ever read. Yeah. Yeah. Always produce the content you most enjoy doing. That's the most important thing. Exactly. That's kind of the way I would approach any kind of content creation, really. And that's why I intend to keep doing. So the fact is, there's still an audience for it because you guys are watching it. And that's the main thing, really. I like our little community. It's it's fun. You know, I just enjoy making this stuff. Quick note, I have been reminded to put the tactic on the workshop. Hopefully, by the time you see this video, it should be up there. It, I've changed the name and exported it. So it's called Notts County Dominator. That's the name of the tactic. Uh, so that should be its name on Steam as well. So you should better go find it. I'm very interested if you do use it. Um, if you're on the fence, please give it a try because I want to see how it works for other teams. Now, I think it's a pretty solid tactic for plug and play, potentially. But I do think that it's important to try and get the right kind of players for the right roles. You do want centre-backs with a bit of pace about them. Right, so we've had a couple of games off camera. We're back today with a couple of games against uh, Oxford and then Peterborough United. Tough ones in this league. But we've kind of proven that we could already handle ourselves a little bit. So we'll see how we get on. Annoyingly, and I really, really did want to go through this time in the EFA Cup. We always have this weird thing. We're being good form in the league. And yet the Cup games, it's like the different sports. I don't know what it was. We're still pretty solid on the night. Regan Booty, would you believe, gave us the lead in the 49th minute against Oxford with his fourth goal of the season already. Another man of the match for the lad. He has just become better and better this year. He's got double the amount of goals this year that he did in the whole of last season. Don't understand it. Brandon Fleming was the one that gave him the assist for it as well. So another assist for him for the year, which is very nice. Again, he only got two in the whole of last season. He's come out of nowhere to be quite solid again. And I thought that was it. But no, they equalised in the 96th minute of four... Four, it was plus four, and they equalised in the 96th minute. Frustrating, because then they went on one on bastard penalties. Uh, frustrating. It was a great strike from Josh Ruffles. Right outside the air. Absolute thunderbolt. But annoying to go out like that as we were on the cusp of heading to the third round of the EFL Cup, and it would have been nice. The board are happy, but it's frustrating. But we then took out our rage on Shrewsbury in the league with a brace of goals from Tyrese Campbell. Matt O'Reilly played this one. Booty gave him a little bit of a rest here. Brought Robbie Burton in for this one. But Matt O'Reilly was sensational. Passes, chances created for days. Lovely little ball in behind for Tyrese Campbell to give us the lead in this one. It was a really nice run from him. Still wouldn't really call it a one on one but it was just a really good run from the lad scoring his fourth of the year and then we won a penalty late on which he dispatched for his fifth of the year so you know he's got five goals for the season now he's our top scorer i think he might just be starting to find something for us which is really really nice shrewsby were okay but a really solid performance again great the back really nice but then in the efl cut uh, the efl you know the leasing.com stupid trophy no one cares about we were unfortunately put out by grimsby a frustrating one i did as you can see from the squad play a very very rotated side it says here that a had a good game 
I disagree. Uh, he is basically responsible for both of their goals. We took the lead early on. Uh, Ian Saunders rolled the ball to Emilio Stavru, who thundered one in off the crossbar. Beautiful goal. His first ever, I think, for the club, which was nice. Um, and then all of a sudden, yeah, Okonkwo just let in two really, really soft goals from Yari and Forsh. And after that, we just couldn't seem to score. So as much as it says he did well, I disagree. He was responsible for both of their goals in my mind. And I really have, I tried to sell him on the final day of the transfer window, but nobody put a bid in, which should say all you need to know about poor Arta Okonkwo. And it does make you wonder if he's taking his investigative journalism career a little bit more serious than his football career. I probably should have just put Jack McGee in again still, because goalkeepers don't really get that unfit. But there you go. Lots of position, like for example, Lee Lee started this game, which is nice to see. Harry Hamblin, uh, Declan Dunn was in there. Look at the bench, you know, Morgan Mellers, Charles. Charlie Collin, Ethan Oliver, lots of these sort of players getting some game time, which is just nice to see, really, because we've really struggled with wingers lately. They've not been performing well, even when we've been winning. So we actually only had the one game off camera, and as you can see, we are still second in the league. Admittedly, once again, I feel like Bristol Rovers will go above us when they inevitably win their game, but that's still a really solid start to the season for us. Can't really argue with it. Uh, Tyrese Campbell now second in the league for goals. Rigan Booty is now the best average rating in the league. He's doing it again. And more important than that is Luke McGee tied for the most clean sheets. I think the main difference for us this year has been our goalkeeping situation. I think we're giving up way more chances than we were last year. Like we regularly concede four or five chances in games now, particularly like against Charlton. And whereas we'd have conceded two or three goals off of those chances with a conquering goal, Luke McGee will regularly keep clean sheets against those kinds of odds. And I think that could be the difference for us this year. Now, you look at that and think, uh, you don't know that much about him, and you'd be right. Um, unfortunately, I had to try to make a bit of a risk on this guy. This is Stephen Walker. He's coming in for £120,000 in January, as you could see from Aberdeen. Now, I was looking for fullbacks, as you know, and when I saw this guy, I thought, okay, this has got some potential here. He's not the tallest again, I appreciate. But I did like some of this. Now, at the time, it said 6 to 10. So we've got slap bang in the middle there. And I really wanted to get him fully scouted before I put the bid in. But then we just, even though I said it's a number one priority, they didn't come back with the latest report yet. So that was a frustrating one. But I felt like there was enough there for me to say he's probably going to have like 11, average 11 crossing, reasonable for a 17 year old. And there was a lot of things I liked in his mental stats, including his, also his tackling is very, very solid to make me think that actually this guy could be pretty decent for us. I don't know if it's the best deal because I like to have guys scouted fully first, but I thought I'd take a bit of a risk on this guy and actually try and get us some backup there, although we won't join until January anyway. But it's just nice to have someone like this come in. So Stephen Walker will join us in January for 120 grand. Two of the best regens we've found so far have both come from Scottish Premier League sites, which I guess kind of makes sense. Haven't found a huge amount of gems yet from those other leagues. Surprising considering how many players are actually in the game. But there you go. This is not going to be easy. Oxford are in the playoff spots. They're only um, three points off the pace. They could level us up on points with this. They are the favourites because they're the home team. But we've done all right this year. We've had one defeat so far that was away at Crew, who are still, uh, as far as I can tell, not having the best year of it so far. Right, so we're obviously not going to play this approach. I'm just going to quick pick it and then go from there. So we don't want to start Hegebert. I've got to keep starting Tyrus Campbell. The fact is, I'm happy to. Oh, that's Romay Campbell. Too many Campbells. So dropkick McPhee. Baldwin will come back in there. I want O'Reilly and Booty this way round. It insists on putting them the other way round, but I know this is what works. And everybody else I'm fine with. But the fact is, because we were able to rest players for that EFL stupid trophy no one cares about, match we've got a fully fresh side here and that could really help us so the bench Colverwell, oliver burton hegebert brindley bars and of course Romay campbell the links are really really solid that's what i'm a huge fan of we've got a real like engine to this team i think mcphee really does need to pick things up though he's had a really poor start to the season um and it's really strange how bad he's actually been to be fair considering he scored an early goal for us in this campaign but he's been really off the pace ever since then in other good news, the board have let me have another two scouts. I was I keep asking them whenever I get the opportunity. And this is the first time they've let me have more than one. So we should be up to nine now, which should really help us barrel through some of these regens we're scouting and hopefully speed up the process a little bit. I want to... Oh, we've already taken the lead. Dara O'Shea with the headed goal inside a minute. And currently, we would go top of the league... I I mean, there you go. Dara O'Shea is so good from these situations. But once again, Regan Booty with the perfect delivery here. That is an absolutely sensational ball. And Dara O'Shea just rises high as the keeper's on his knees for some reason. And we lead already. But yeah, as I was saying, more scouts. Uh, and that's always a good thing. So we can bring through some more youngsters. And it's another pot. Like, okay. I realise it doesn't happen every single game. But please, SI... Can we just tone down the amount of goals scored from set pieces a little bit? And maybe just put them in other areas? Like, I just feel like too many goals for both scored and conceded come from set-piece situations to the point where it's a bit farcical. You, ne you need to have a little bit more variation in goals being scored, um, particularly the open play ones. We, we need more of that. It just seems so unbalanced. And I hate... 
Like, like obviously we're two nil up and that's really really nice and all that. But we're not like we're doing anything fancy from corners. Booty's just put one in here and this time Akinola's got in front of this man. The defender should be doing better there. And we're two nil up inside six minutes against Oxford, both from corners. Brought out. Oh, hello. He's through here. Oh, and he's already in. Oh, what a save. So, but, but those we don't get to put in the back of the net. We, we, come on now. I haven't really created a lot since. But honestly, we've been so good at seeing out matches where we've taken the lead like this that we really don't. Oh, hello. I can Oh, wow. This hill. Oh, my God. Hall is quick. And it's an insanely good save. Uh, it's another good chance here. And oh, another exceptional save from Jack McGee. Duhaney. He loves a shot from this kind of range. You know he does. And he's throw. Wow. D'Amico Duhaney has absolutely thundered one into the roof of the net there. I mean, I don't know how we ended up getting the shot away. The ball comes to him after the rebound here, but they've got it pretty well marked up and he's just sort of fumbled his way past the defender and absolutely rocketed one into the top of the net and the keeper's not even moved. In fact, <laughs> what the hell is going on? It's 3-0. The keeper literally did not move a muscle as that goal flew in for 3-0. D'Amico Duhaney now with his first of the year. Now he's driving forward again here. Baldwin. Surely he can't square it for someone. And now it's 4-0. Tyrese Campbell has popped up with a goal. And would you believe Baldwin actually squared the ball for a tap in for Campbell. And now we're 4-0 up away at Oxford United. The actual, they tackle it through. Yeah, it's one of those annoying ones where they tackle it through. But Baldwin actually squares the ball. Lovely little pullback. And there is Tyrese Campbell for 4-0. We're 4-0 up away at Oxford United. Fair enough, the first two goals were from set pieces. And I can't really pretend that that still doesn't frustrate me. But since then, Duhaney scores a thunderbolt. And Tyrese Campbell with a lovely tap. I'm sorry, red? We're 4-0 up, lads. Can we maybe have some positives? Absolutely nothing happening. Can I look at, look at the stats of this game? How are we 4-0 up in this match? It's crazy. What's Booty got on us now? Oh my giddy aunt. It's five, and Regan Booty has now scored a direct free kick. He scored two of those this season. What a bloody goal that is from Regan Booty. He's now got two assists and a goal on the night as well. His fifth of the year... I mean, the keeper could do a little bit better. We're 5-0 up away at Oxford United. This is the most, like, flattering scoreline... This scoreline flatters us to an insane amount. We've not created that much in this match. Hmm. I mean, 5-0 up away at Oxford United. I, I don't know what to say about that, to be honest. Sigales. Go on, keep the clean sheet, though. Thumb to clear, and it's out for a goal kick to us. And we're going to win 5-0 at Oxford, with Regan Booty being an absolute monster. Uh, interestingly, Akinola gets man of the match again. But he and O'Shea were sensational. But Booty, again, two assists and a goal on the night. Campbell with a goal. 5-0 away at Oxford United. Jesus. But in addition to that, the only thing I can think of to try and help this a little bit more, because I don't use any custom tactics on things like directed free kicks, particularly, and indirect free kicks. They're literally the default ones for the game. However, I have been using a, a corner tactic I made for attacking corners that I made with the Chelsea save, and it worked quite well in the beta, so we took it across. I'm going to turn that off because I just feel like there's an unrealistic amount of goals being scored from corners. Now, again, let me know what you guys think, uh, whether I should turn it on or off, but I'm personally thinking I should turn it off right now because I just don't like that. You know, and obviously I know that it shouldn't be on me to make the game more realistic, but sometimes you have to, you know, so we're going to turn that off now. As for the lineup, honestly, I think we're quite happy to go with the exact same lineup as the last game. We played exceptionally well. Also, training is really improving for some of these guys now, which is pleasing. So on the bench, Oconquo, Oliver, Burton, Hegeber, Brindley, Bars, Campbell. No surprises there. It's Nigel Atkins that's managing Peterborough, which is pretty cool. So let's see how we do, I suppose. I mean, we won at Oxford. Why can't we go and win at Peterborough? Like, obviously I want to do back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back promotions because it shows we've signed the right players and whatnot, but I want to do it because we're trying to score good goals and trying to play football, you know? But this is what I mean about Regan Booty, see? Sam Hughes was inspired. Um, somehow, twice. <laughs> sure, well, Sam Hughes loves him, doesn't he? Oh, what a pick-out from McGee. Again, something Oconquo would never have done. Fleming. That's a tough ball for Baldwin to catch on, but he might just about do it. Back for Duhaney. Cuts inside, finds for O'Reilly. Oh, what a lovely finish on the bottom side. I mean, that is just a really nice goal from Matt O'Reilly. Duhaney with a lovely little drop back, and we lead 1-0 away at Peter United as well. Um, I was surprised that Baldwin kept this in, but when he did, I think it's actually deflected. No, it hasn't. Duhaney just cuts inside the defender, drops it back from Matt O'Reilly, and it's a lovely finish at the near post. Christy Pym can't get across, and we lead 1-0 away at Peterborough now. And again, great distribution from McGee. Baldwin, all the way in. Oh, if he could have squared that. Whipped across, and Baldwin's through. He's probably going to shoot this time. Yeah, he does, and Campbell puts in the rebound, and we're 2-0 up now. Tyrese Campbell, he's going to the end of a few of those so far this year from Baldwin. Admittedly, he's not going to get the assist this time, but there's a couple of times this year that balls across to Enzio Baldwin have really resulted in us tearing teams apart. The amount of space they give him here, and Campbell's got great positioning to just be in the right spot to get on the end of these. It's now 2-0 to us here, and Campbell's now scored his seventh goal of the year, and we're 2-0 up. Oh, dear. Uh, Campbell's picked up an injury. I don't want to risk keeping him on just because you know what can happen with those. 
Yeah, I mean, solid as a rock, really. O'Reilly and then Tyrese Campbell with limited Peterborough to nothing, but the two slight injuries could be an issue. I really, really do like Jack McGee's distribution, though. I feel like he picks out some really nice passes more often than not. Baldwin, can he flip one across for Hegeber? Oh, that's a nice little touch there. He couldn't quite get it, though. Tony now. Should be a simple... Oh, he's gone straight through them there. And it's a good save by McGee again. Over the top for Baldwin. Men in the box to find one, perhaps. Back for Brindley. Can he find one? Finds McPhee. Oh, McPhee should be scoring there. That's his That's his moment. O'Hara, that's surely offside against Ivan Tony. It might not be, though. And it's a great save from McGee either way. Well, I mean, there we go. It looks like we are actually going to be going top of the league again. Oh, not even again, but we're going top of the league for the first time because Fleetwood couldn't win their match away from home. Or whatever it was. And it's Pete Brunil, Notts County 2. Matt O'Reilly and Tyrese Campbell. We're still playing excellent football at the moment. Playing the ball around nicely. Got another two of victory. We really do look solid in the defensive side of things now. Brandon Fleming out for one or three days. And okay, that's fine. Phew, that could have been worse. But look, five straight wins and no... Oh no, sorry. Four straight wins without even conceding a goal there. And five straight wins in total. That's what we really needed to get going again. What about a big chunk and then do Sunderland since that's such a big team in general? I feel like they'll be further up by the time we actually get to that match. That's the hope anyway. Um, just so it's a big old game because a lot of the games we've got recently are sort of, well, apart from Coventry, are sort of mid-table kind of clashes. So I'd rather show you guys a big game like potentially against Sunderland and then maybe after that we can do a double live come with Bristol Rovers and someone because, oh, Bristol Rovers in the FA Cup first round perhaps because I really want to show you the Bristol Rovers game because I feel like they're going to be towards the top at that point. And if we keep on growing the way we're going, then you never know where we're going to be. Uh, I don't think it can continue, but who knows? So if you've enjoyed this episode, drop a like on the video. That'd be sensational. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome as well. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.